Hey guys, it's me, Jafoli here, and we're up to the 6th level of the Norman Campaign, the first battle of Lincoln. As always, timestamp in the description if you want to go straight into the action. Uh, so, in the first battle of Lincoln, the Empress Matilda made her move for the English throne, fueling the fire of the Civil War. So let's get started. After England defeated the French at the Battle of Brimule, Normandy was back in King Henry's hands. But one year later, his good fortune turned to tragedy. In 1120, his son and heir, William Adelin, died in a shipwreck. The future of Henry I's kingdom was in jeopardy. Henry desperately needed a new heir. With no legitimate sons left alive, he broke with tradition and chose his daughter, Matilda. Henry forced his barons to swear an oath to accept Matilda as queen. But when the king died, they broke their promise. England would not be ruled by a woman. Matilda's cousin Stephen saw his chance and claimed the throne. The crisis moved to the capital. At Westminster Abbey, Stephen was crowned king. But Matilda wanted what was hers. She was also lining up powerful supporters who would fight Stephen for her right to rule. Their conflict engulfed England in civil war. Fighting raged throughout the land. In 1141, everything focused on one of the kingdom's most strategic cities, Lincoln. Matilda's allies had commandeered the castle. But King Stephen was determined to take it back. He besieged the castle. Stalemate. As dawn broke on February the 2nd, Everything was about to change. Matilda's half-brother, Robert of Gloucester, raced to break the siege. As Robert's forces approached Lincoln, Stephen's army turned away from the castle to face them. Robert could win Matilda the crown, but only if his army could win the day. The First Battle of Lincoln, 1141. The castle at Lincoln was under siege. Inside, forces loyal to the Empress Matilda awaited relief from her half-brother Robert of Gloucester. To break the siege, Robert would have to capture the king. So, there's actually... I don't know if this is a bug or if it's intentional. I'll explain it when we get closer to the first battle. But the archers in this level, and actually all units in general in this level, are actually going to do a lot more damage to your units than you think. And I'll show you what you mean. So your enemy has plus two, plus two here as well. But that's not what I'm getting at. You'll see in a moment. Lincolnshire. Robert of Gloucester's forces approached Lincoln. Their task, to liberate the castle from King Stephen's siege. All right, so as you can see, we start with scouts and men-at-arms. While behind Lincoln's walls, troops loyal to Matilda held the castle for the Empress. And this is sort of where they try to teach you about stealth forests and their use. So we need to move Robert's all our units in here. Stage in ambush. To prevent enemy reinforcements from joining with King Stephen's army. And put them to stand ground. So the V command here. Now, you don't want to be on the edge of the stealth forest, because otherwise your units will be spotted. They can still see at the edges. And this is where scouts are useful, because they can see outside of it. Concealed themselves in a sheltered grove, and lay in wait for the enemy. Now, you sort of want to split up your men-at-arms a bit, because you want... Um, they'll be in small three... They'll be in small groups, and you want to attack all the groups at once. I'm going to try to keep an archer alive so I can show you what I mean about that damage. Even with their extra damage boost, it's still an easy level to beat. So as you can see, they have plus two, so it should be nine damage, and you have plus four ranged armor, so at most, they should do five damage. However, they will do eight damage instead per shot, and I'll show you in a second... So these groups will mostly be of archers and spearmen with uh, sometimes horsemen mixed in. So now we'll attack. Split up your forces a bit. 
so like they don't walk around like that. Alright, so we're gonna keep that archer at the top alive. Alright, so now we're just gonna pull back, and I'm gonna send one of the men at arms at him. Now look at the damage that men at arms takes. See, he's taking eight full damage per shot. He's got nine, and he's got four. It should only be doing five damage. Now, it's not a big deal. Like I said, you can still easily beat this level. I'm just not sure if it's intentional or if it's a bug. And it only happens on hard difficulty. It does not happen on the other difficulties. So our next spot's over here. But he knew more were on the way. So I actually tested it on easy and intermediate, and both times um, the armor values and unit damages matched up. It's only on hard difficulty where the, da um, the damage value don't add up to uh, the damage you take. Which is interesting, but um... Either way, it's still an easy level, but they'll have that damage bonus for the entire level, so just be, uh, just be aware of that. So we're gonna have our units be up here, and we're just gonna wait for them to go a bit far up the road before we attack. After we defeat these ambushes too, after we do these ambushes as well, guys, we'll get reinforcements. Alright, so now we'll charge and we'll set up a split one to go up there. Even their melee attacks that they get do quite a bit of damage. See, they do 11 instead, which is quite frankly frustrating to deal with. It's like your armor doesn't exist for some reason. Alright, so we've got one more to go. With more of Steven's reinforcements eliminated, Robert was steadily undermining the siege. This time I will use the scouts in here because we'll get the scouts from the reinforcements, I believe. And the waiting. So you could go into here, but this is just the best spot. Remember, have the scouts on hold ground so they don't attack. And you could use these formations too to have your units split up so they charge like in a line or things like that, or staggered or wedged. Like staggered's good for avoiding like stuff like the Maganel shots. Alright, so there's a horseman. And we'll attack. We'll have those scouts go for the bottom archers. Try to just keep one alive, but as long as the archers are um, being distracted by the other scouts, you don't want to lose all your men at arms. And you only really need one scout, you don't need more than one. And I'm pretty sure you do get one with reinforcements, so... As you can see, we've dealt with the um, enemy reinforcements just fine with our ambushes. And uh, have your scout make sure they can see into the stealth forest. Your scouts can just regenerate out of combat. Bam, easy. 17 men at arms still alive, and we're gonna get a good chunk of reinforcements here. Robert's men decimated King Stephen's. Although they are pretty injured. And were poised to break the siege. Alright, so here's our reinforcements with two more scouts, more men at arms, and a lot of archers. Robert sent in a large company of reinforcements to aid his vanguard. So now we've got to clean out the to surrounding the village, the would need to cut off which will give us more he reinforcements again. The town. So, just go through the stealth forests again with the scouts, followed by your army. And you can see there's a massive army we have to deal with there. And then we're just going to charge in. Onto our armies together, which they essentially are. And send some more men at arms over there. Have your um, archers target their archers, just because the archers will do a lot of uh, the ones going to be doing a lot of damage. The spearmen won't be doing as much. Well, they might, but just attack anything you can see. And specifically, I'd probably get rid of the enemy archers more anyway. I think they're more more of the dangerous group. 
Once you burn down this market town, you'll get another chunk of reinforcements, and we'll have to save our Welsh allies that'll come in. As you can see, our archers have fire arrows. So in the campaign, they'll do more damage to siege and buildings. I believe in multiplayer, they just do more damage. I think they also do some to buildings. Not 100% sure on that. But they definitely don't do bonus damage to siege, as far as I know. Here comes more reinforcements. Don't worry about those villagers running. They're not necessary to worry about. With the market town so, in ruins, move to the east. King Stephen's supplies began to dwindle. Over the bridge, and you'll and we'll have to save our Welsh allies in a moment. Robert received word that Welsh troops under Matilda's banner were en route to join forces with. Remember, you can heal your archers with the uh, set up camp King ability. Stephen had the roads to Lincoln heavily guarded. Just gonna wait here, send our men at arms and archers in. Risk, even for the hardy Welshmen. Because we want our men at arms to absorb the spearmen. Uh, Brace, because if, if they see br uh, cavalry, they'll brace against them, and we don't want uh, to brace against our, our knights. Right. Now we're going to move forward. There's our Welsh allies, as you can see, longbowmen and spearmen. And there's the enemy we have to deal with. To so wait for them to get their attention and then charge in with knights, as well as your men at arms and your archers. Send a few to go over to those knights, um, archers, and send a few to go over to the archers up here. And then just, yeah, deal with the archer reinforcements, and your Welsh allies will have a lot of their troops still alive. Nice and easy. Joining forces on the road to Lincoln, Matilda's allied troops made for the castle to lift the sea. They heal slow with the setup camp, but then I guess it'll be pretty overpowered because that entire circle will heal every archer in there. Or a long moment. So. Alright, so eventually we'll come up to another enemy camp, which we'll have to attack through a stealth forest. So I'm just healing our archers a little bit here, and then we're going to move forward. So we've got a massive army, although we can't control half of it, because it's, you know, Welsh allies. So we're going to go through the ambush site up here, because the Welsh allies will attack from the front, and we're going to attack from the side. Because the archers, as you can see, have set up palisade spikes, or whatever you want to call it, palings. So they'll stop the archery charges, which is not good for us, or they'll deal damage to our archers. So, uh, archers, sorry, <laughs> cavalry. Gotta get my words straight there. So you can send the men at arms and such, but um, we're gonna be going through the uh, stealth forest and hitting him from the back. We just need to wait for our Welsh allies to get in position. And this is why we want to send Robert's our scouts forward first. A large detachment of Stephen's soldiers guarding the castle gates. If they hope to liberate Lincoln, they would need to break the blockade and rout the army. Just slowly move forward. Wait for the Welsh to attack, and then you will attack from the back. Welsh to move forward a bit more, which they should in a second. I think I might actually have to have my units there, so I'll just move my units back, at least the scouts back because they'll move the fastest. Yeah, AI sometimes doesn't move. Yep, so there you go. We had to have some units with the Welsh. Alright, so now once the Welsh start attacking, send your men at arms in first, followed by your archers. And then send your cavalry in. Have your cavalry just go for the um, archers at the back. Well, they will sometimes just go for the palings, so yeah, that's gonna happen. Don't worry about it. You'll be able to easily clean this up. And we, we get access to all these buildings and these villages. And 
It's a good thing most of our Welsh bowmen are still alive because they'll man these wolves for us. Alright. Now, we want to move our archers to this wall up here. And we want to start getting our archer upgrades. Leaving the gates to the castle unguarded. And we're going to use this Abbey of Kings to heal our men at arms and our knights. So all this is now ours. So we're going to send our units to go on gold. We're going to train more. Robert's men finally united with Lincoln's garrison. I want to train more archers from the uh, Council Hall just to quickly um, up, um, get some numbers up. To lift the siege, they needed to destroy the enemy camps surrounding the castle. They will sometimes send towers to. Uh, Bypass the wall, so that'll also get the defensive bonuses by being on the wall. So keep some melee units there to cover for your archers. You can also get crossbowmen, which is nice uh, for dealing with armored units like knights and men at arms themselves. So we want to get more on food, wood, and gold. Stone's not necessarily important, but it's still useful to upgrade, um, like the knight, uh, the keep with the spring base. But you cannot lose this keep, it's part of the objective to keep it alive. And we have to clean out these camps. I would wait to get your upgrades before you attack, although you can possibly attack before it. And you might even be able to reach some of the units on the, through the walls, but it's better off just to play it a little safe. Get your upgrades first, and then we can worry about attacking the keeps. Because as you attack the camps, they'll get a steady supply of reinforcements along the road, and it's a little annoying to deal with. So there's a couple of boars and some deer here if you want to take advantage of that. Before you do that, of course, get survival techniques. I'm going to build a better lumber camp there. So they're close enough to it. And with these units mostly healed, we're going to bring them to our front. So these are our Welsh allies, now suddenly changed colours to match Matilda. And they'll eventually go on the walls. So if you see battering rams, just focus it down with your archers since they have the um, ability to fire fire arrows. Just to clean them up. Now for some reason, this stone wall tower, when you upgrade it with a spring on placement, it doesn't want to attack. So I don't think it's really worth upgrading. I think it's only this one that's somewhat bugged. Last I checked. You can still upgrade them, there's nothing really much to do with stone, although you can get another town center if you wish. Alright, so I'm going to send all these villages that we're on, and we're going to go kill those boars. I'm going to train some more archers. And we want to get the network of citadels buff, so we can get um, our attack speed bonuses near outposts, keeps, and town centers. We're going to bring our scouts back here so we can just move a lot of our huntable food here. Closer to the mill. As you can see, there's also Maganels. So if you see Maganels, kill them quickly. Alright, so that ball is pretty close. Let's kill all the beer. But yeah, the Maganels, while they won't one-shot your units on the wall because you get the bonus, they will still do a lot of damage. You can get a couple of spring holds to deal with their, any of their siege that come up. So you, I suggest getting a couple to deal with the siege. I think two or three will be enough. And this will be a, more than enough food to um, tide you over. Just gonna get rid of all the boars. And that's gonna be plenty of food for you. I mean, you got the 3,000 in boars alone. See, we're still under attack. The Maganels there, and you saw the. Um, saw the Maganels fight. But thanks to the extra range we get from being on the wall, you can even just shoot them down. And, um, so we do have an arsenal and a blacksmith by default already. Get both sets of upgrades. Now the villagers we train, we're going to put more on gold itself. But eight idlers, which is not great. I thought I'd put you back on food. There we go. Alright, so we're going to get upgrade our arrows first with um, balanced projectiles. Then we're going to get reg with it because it'll affect all our units. You can keep a couple of villagers nearby the wall so they can make sure it's repaired. See, easily done. Because only siege can hit the stone walls anyway. See, we're getting a lot on food. So we're just going to ha have a much set. And where's our market? So I know we start with a market. There it is. So we're just going to sell some so we can get those upgrades. Uh, we're going to get red rivets. And I would suggest getting a Maganel if you want to attack the camps too. Just because the extra damage they help deal in an AoE can be very helpful. 
Get one more spring hold for there. Since, we, like I said, we're going to get a lot of food, we're just going to get sell it some. And the siege camp is here. So I'm going to actually mark these. Six, seven, eight. Going to train some more men at arms. Unfortunately, you have to go outside the wall to attack with the spring hold too, so... But they will do good damage against Siege. But really, archers are somewhat all you need here. <laughs> you see, that tower is still attacking just fine. So we're just going to get our army prepared by rallying them there. You can also use the Council Hall. And this combination will be enough, so Men at Arms and Archers will be more than enough to deal with the uh, attacks. We also want to get Silk Bowstrings when we can afford to do so. And just to make some use of the stone, we'll get the Springhold in placement on this tower. Being attacked again. I'm going to send these guys that were part of the main army as well, because we're going to use them to clean up the camps. I'm going to love the AI somewhat being silly. It does help a bit. <laughs> Uh, upgrade your men at arms too, don't forget to do that. We'll actually get, um, there should be another barracks somewhere that we can use, if not. We'll get the armor clad upgrade from the fortress, and there it is, that's the barracks I was looking for. Sell some food to get it, and then once those upgrades kick in, we're going to start attacking the camps. We do want to get one last one, which is the silk bowstrings, which we can get pretty soon. Sell some more food. Get it. And then we're set. We don't really need greased axles, so that'll be helpful. So, reassign your control groups, because we're going to have most of our archers hold the wall now. We don't really have to mark them. As you can see, like I said, they um, will glow on the wall so they can steal your bonus. Um, so, if they have melee units go on the wall, make sure you have your own melee units to like tank the damage. And your spring on placement from the keep can usually do some good damage too, so make sure you research that. If you're worried, you can also just train some units from here and just send them along the wall. But your archers should be, have more than enough to take care of it. Alright, so we got our blacksmith and we're going to get decarbonization as well. Training more. And we'll begin our attack in a moment. So once de uh, decarbonization is done, we'll attack. As you can see, we've cleaned the central camp a bit because they've been just in range of silk bowstrings for us. Alright, we're going to send the spring to take care of that Maganel. You could really much go to that wall and just attack the front line. It's hilarious. So yeah, if you have... Four spring holds, you can pretty much, or five, you can one shot a Maganel. Which is very handy. Alright, so, send in the men at arms first, followed by the archers, and then followed by the knights, once those palings are dead. And we'll send in the Maganel too. And just keep training units. As you can see, there's a lot of spearmen, so that's why you don't really have to, re well, can't really rely on the knights. But have the knights just help around the wall. This is why the Maganel is very handy to have, because they're still in a group, and the AoE damage just helps a lot. I'm going to send the Knights to go to the Archers at the back. Council Hall is faster at training Archers too, guys. Remember, 7 seconds as opposed to 15, so keep training from that as well. Alright, so that's the Eastern Camp clean. We're going to go for the central one next. Builders forces struck hard, destroying one of King Stephen's siege camps. We're running low on wood, so we'll get a few more villages on wood as well. You can also get the lumber preservation upgrade and try to keep them close to the same uh, lumber camp instead of them going around. You can also get fertilization for extra food income since we have the gold coming in, we might as well. Alright, so now we've got men at arms here, so the knights can be helpful in this camp, along with um, uh, your own knights. Let's just uh, 
So here they come, they'll come try to deal with the uh, Maganel, and then your units can deal with them just fine. And you easily just wipe out the main force of the central camp. Charge again. Oh, see, those spearmen embraced, and they nearly got hit on my knights, so I just moved them out of the way. And we're actually getting uh, the Citadel upgrade from the walls, the Stonewall Towers. They're giving us the bonus for just in range. And the last camp's up here. King Stephen's army dwindled. And we can actually make use of these archers now. We don't really need to worry about holding the walls because we have our main army on the field. So we're just going to attack the last part. And we're pop capped now too. So yeah, like a small force of men-at-arms, archers, and um, uh, battering rams will always come in a reinforcement for some reason every time you attack this camp. So it's just best to make sure you have a massive force enough to deal with it all at once. And we have plenty of archers. We have 82 archers. Even with their bonuses, we're one-shotting everything. See, so we're just going to keep training our units. Sending our waypoint over here now. Training from this one too. <laughs> Mostly just screen, have a screening section for your um, archers, and your archers will take care of the rest. Yeah, as you can see, they, they do so much damage even with the armor. Like, it's ridiculous. Alright, here we go. Now we have to deal with one more army, and then we win the level. Here they come. Stephen was spotted, shielded by his men. To end the siege, Matilda's forces needed to capture Stephen and rout his army. That's where we just keep training more units, and then once he gets into range, we attack him. That's mostly horsemen, men at arms, and archers as well, as well as King Stephen, but your army will be more than enough to deal with him. Just have your spring holds attack Stephen, and your all the mag magnels that you see, and easy peasy little squeezy. You're done. Okay, your spring olds being able to shoot their Maganels will help you a lot. You can always keep some units on the walls too, if you're worried. But yeah, you'll have more than enough production to hold them off. So for some reason, these ones don't have like the QWER for training units. Kind of silly, if you ask me. Have our archers focus down the Maganels because, as you can see, their Maganels are doing a lot of damage. And wipe out your army in, in a blink of an eye. That's where I'm um, splitting your units with like the staggered formation is useful. But we've already taken care of most of the army, so it really doesn't matter at this point. See, Steven and these archers are still alive, but once Steven's down, we win this. There we go. That's it for the first battle of Lincoln. Nice, simple, even with the enemy having an advantage. And finally captured King Stephen. Matilda's forces had won the battle at Lincoln. But the fight for the crown was not over yet. victory. Alright, so that's it for the first battle of Lincoln, guys. Uh, join me next time for... which is the next level? I always forget the next level. Uh, it's the Siege of Wallingford, that's it. Um, so this week, guys, I'm planning to do an AOM marathon on Twitch, so if you want to see me play AOM live, you can come and follow me on Twitch to know when I go live. Um, so I try to do these like maybe every couple of months I'll do like a marathon and um, it's also helpful to help me somewhat res uh, restore my sleeping pattern. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, that's the last update I really needed to say. Um, I'll catch you guys next time for the Siege of Wallingford.